In this video, we're going to discuss the tenant coordinator and adding a prospect screen, the first tab inside of the prospective tenants. First thing we're going to do is select add a prospect. From there, we're going to put a simple name. Superman Super. We're going to select the properties that he might be interested in. And we just select a couple of properties that we have inside the database here. It's going to give us our information and then we're going to click add. Based on that, Property Genie will add the prospect, and once the prospect is added, it opens a screen that allows you to enter more information in the screen. So we'll enter just some standard data that has to be in there for you to continue on. <coughs> Select your state, enter any driver's license information, date of birth, and we'll enter some phone number information as well. And we're just going to copy and paste that all in so we don't have to continue with the process. Email address. Again, we're going to copy and paste that in. Preferred contact, we'll call it home phone. Payment type, standard as a check, and then we'll save the record. At this point, we can come over to the application status screen. The application status initially when entering someone is going to be on the pending. Beyond that, we can edit the record, and this allows us to go through the processes. And you'll notice these processes are not labeled alphabetically or listed alphabetically. They're listed in the order in which the process would happen. So we're going to go next to application received, and save the record. At this point, <coughs> the tenant coordinator will receive the application and all information associated with it. Let's go to edit the record again, and then we're going to go to paid. So if you have an application fee, we'll save the record once more. Once they've paid, you'll notice that we have a couple screens that come up, request credit. Now this ties into the resident data credit reference system, and you put your username and password in, and all information will go into resident data and request the uh, tenant or potential tenants information. Once that's received, back from resident data, of course you're going to select request credit and that's going to say get report which we can pull from resident data once we receive the email and get the information. Now if we edit record, once again go to credit received, once we receive that report save record. Then we can load our employer docs, which as we discussed previously are going to open in Word, and these will be saved underneath their documents tab on the right side here. So as we begin to look at that, we see that it comes pre-filled with all the information for this person. Now we did not enter the employer's, the current employer's information. We'll go back and do that in a second, and then repopulate the screen. So let's go over to their information current employer, and we'll say some standard data, edit the record, and we're just going to have them be a local company, and of course all this data is just basic but false data, just for the sake of uh, filling in the fields that we would pull this information based on their application, by the way. And again, we're just verifying, putting the information based on their application into the screen. put the wrong thing at the top there, so we're going to put five years. And then we're going to leave the bottom part blank just for the sake of saving a little time here. Save the record. And if we go back to application status, employer docs, and we view those. Generate. It tells me they already exist, but we didn't have the employer information there before, so we're going to create a new one. 
It's going to come up with the correct information. Notice that all the information is filled out correctly. And you just fax this off after you've printed it. The great thing about Property Genie is it's going to store all the documents here underneath their uh, documents folder. And all documents associated with this employee are going to be listed here. So we'll go back to application status and we'll go to landlord docs. Well, I guess we better go ahead and fill the residence information out first. Because that's going to come up blank until we do. And of course, here's a screen that once we've generated both those documents, it's going to ask me do I want to change the status to those being requested. And we'll go ahead and say yes. Now, credit error is popping up because we don't have a credit app status because we didn't request the credit previously. So we'll just manually change that. And what it's telling me is that the credit did not come back complete or correctly on this. So we'll go to the next uh, item save record and this is where we would be if the credit had been requested correctly and now we have requested those documents we're going to go into approve subject to and we can add which property they're approved for of the ones they chose and then we can say that we want a subject to task here as well we'll save the record and we'll go to uh, we can do an approval letter and we'll just view it and of course, again, this is going to be stored in their document screen. Notice it's filled out with some additional information. You're approved, subject to, your qualified guarantor, and a higher security deposit. Going over to the document screen, you notice that that's there as well, the approvable. Here, notice we can also select more documents, prospect application. We can create that, and it'll be listed in the screen and it would fill out properly correctly with all the information there as well. So you see how that works. Change the application status again to approved. Save the record. We can print another approval like record. Edit the record. And then we can go to tenant. Save record. Now obviously it's going to tell us that because we have not um, filled out the lease application on this yet, so we will do that in just a few minutes.